Good afternoon. Wow, okay, so this is the perfect time to present because everybody's in a food coma. Everybody's kind of sleepy, so this is great. So she, she already introduced me, so I'm not gonna go through that. I work for the government, so I'm anti-redundancy. So, <laughs> so there's a saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. So I have about 35,000 words coming at you in about 15 minutes. And as the people who know me, um, they know I'm a talker, right? So we're just gonna go into it. So part of my job is um, starting restoration on reservoirs. The Bureau of Reclamation is doing a pool raise on Clay Elm Lake, so it's the Clay Elm Pool Raise, and they're raising the level of the reservoir three feet. So because of that, there are implications that affect our land. So advice from a lake, one of the things is be clear. When you are working with people, you want to make sure that everybody's on the same page, your intentions are clear, and everybody's expectations at the end match. For these projects, you want to get involved as early as possible. So because plant propagation, some plants take up to three years to propagate, ideally four or five years to get involved because then you're part of developing the plant species, you're part of um, getting those contracts together because that takes time. Um, again, reasonable expectations. So the top right picture is looking at um, the new avalanche bridge off I-90 near Snoqualmie Pass from where the Palouse to Cascades Trail is. So it gives you kind of a good look of what the reservoir levels kind of look like and kind of the, the edges of the reservoir. The first thing that I usually notice is that there's not a whole lot of plants. So to turn this into a highly vegetated area, probably not gonna happen. To turn it into like a wetlandy area, probably not gonna happen. Communication, again, trying to make sure that everybody's on the same page, things come up during the whole project, make those issues or concerns clear with your partners. The graph on the, le on the bottom right shows the way that the reservoir levels can uh, drop suddenly. So for a lot of these plants that we install, they're going to be underwater for probably seven months out of the year. And then you get this drastic drop where then they're exposed. Then they have to grow really fast and reproduce. And then they're gonna be drowned again. So it's very challenging conditions. Here's kind of an image of um, where we are currently as of March 18th for three of our major reservoirs. So Ketchilis, which is the one that's nearest Snoqualmie Pass, we're only about 42% full. Middle Kachis, 32% full. And Clay Elm, which is the reservoir that we're gonna be starting to do a lot of the re uh, restoration work, we're only 34% full. So when you have plants that are gonna require water to establish, this is kind of a problem. And again, challenges, you have that fluctuating water level. The picture on the top is a little tree island that's in Ketchilis Lake. When the water drops, it's pretty much high and dry for two to three months, and then water comes back up again. In addition to the fluctuating water levels, you have this wave action of the reservoir. And I have another picture further on in the, in the presentation that shows kind of the um, ripples that are created from these, this wave action. Um, again, inundation, where the plants are drowned. And then the soils itself, a lot of this is glacial till, so not a lot of organics in there. And then you have the human equation. So one of our other projects is um, Spelei Beach, which is off of Clay Elm Lake. Um, it's a day use area, and it's a part of the beach where vehicles are actually allowed on the beach but only to a certain point. It's basically egress and ingress only, but people take that above and beyond, right? Surprise. And they'll continue to drive up the shoreline and they're driving through creeks. 
So part of the mitigation is to preserve that shoreline um, and to establish some, some vegetation, because it's, it's pretty bare. So on the bottom left is a photo pre-construction. You can see where the stakes, where they're planning to put stuff. Um, upper right-ish, um, 2019, is after they've put in those mitigation spots. You can now see that there's a whole lot of sand in there as well. And the logs that have been installed um, are anchored down. And they're chained to each other as well. So um, people are having a hard time cutting them apart for firewood. Um, it created kind of these good planting pockets for us where we could put um, plants where we thought they'd be a little bit more protected. But because a lot of those structures became like a playground for kids, a lot of the people pulled up our plantings. And then you can see the use. This is on a, a kind of slow day. Spelei is busy during the summer. It's packed with cars and people, and now side-by-sides and ATVs. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting site. So this is kind of to the, as you're going down the boat launch, to the left. So again, more structures. Um, again, trying to create little planting pockets. You can see this side has a little bit more organic soil that was added to it and amended to try and give our plants the best um, opportunity to establish for themselves and not get pulled out. Um, OK, so second piece of advice from a lake is make positive ripples. So this is where you have the locally adapted, genetically appropriate plants, native plants, that are going to be your best opportunity to be successful. Um, some of you might recognize Mark Norman from Washington State Department of Transportation. He is standing by a stooling bed of willow, Salix, um, Sachinsis, I think, um, that we have established at Coeur d'Alene Nursery. And this is where we go for a lot of our material. Because the projects that we're involved in are pretty big, um, for the first phase of the I-90 project, we needed like 30,000 stakes. So it's not something that you can go out and collect in the wild. So this kind of gave us a, an extra edge. Um, that bed has been established for a while. Um, we got an uh, email from Coeur d'Alene a few years ago and said that there's moose now in the, in the stooling beds. Um, so they try to um, mow those down um, every few years just to kind of keep, keep it under control. Um, on the bottom right is another area along um, I-90. It's uh, Resort Creek. And you can see above the Resort Creek um, dry at that point. And then they have an earthen berm to try and keep most of the water for the creek in the creek when the reservoir level does go down. Um, and you can see how flooded it gets. Um, the um, dry, or it was flooded in um, June 2020, and two months later, it's pretty much high and dry. And you can see that the plants that we have alongside the top, they're, they're struggling a little bit. Um, and because I can travel to the future, 2027, this is what it's going to look like. OK, typo. So this is actually 2017. This is as we were planting. Again, you can see where the edge of the bank is. And in the previous photo, that was completely flooded. Um, again, plants have not been really happy about those conditions. So we have mixed success in those areas. Um, so when I had talked earlier about the wave action, on the picture kind of upper center, you can see the ripples alongside the bank. That's from the wave action. So what's the first thing that you see? There's no plants there. And there's a reason why there's no plants. The wave action is pretty, pretty extreme. So it's really hard to get plants established on that kind of um, surface. Um, we had talked about Resort Creek. Um, you want to, again, third piece of advice, look beneath the surface. If it's going to be underwater or dry, What's going to be there? What is there now? Um, some of the carrot species that you see in kind of the forefront, that had already established by itself. Um, we did try putting some carrot plugs in there. Again, they weren't too happy about it, but some, some are doing OK. Um, oh, this is a good before and after. Um, so the photo on the top left is what Resort Creek 
used to look like coming through that single little pipe, perched pipe. Fish are not going to be able to go through that, right? That's what it looks like top right after the construction. And it's the whole build it and they will come. It was either that same year or a year after, maybe. Scott, you might know. But fish were already starting to travel through that stream once that undercrossing and that big bridge was put in and the culvert was taken out. This is the one that I have the hardest part with, is the stay calm. I don't like it when my plants die. I don't like it when things fail. But even though there's failure, I've learned that there's lessons, again, from those failures. Um, try different things. Um, one of the things that we had started hearing about is these Carex mats. So Helen worked with Derby Canyon natives when Ted Alway owned it. And she said, can you grow like these one foot by one foot mats for us? He said, sure, why not? We kept researching things, and they were using different things to kind of stake down these mats. Well, we thought, well, why don't we just use willow material, cut stakes, use those to anchor it down. And you can see in the red circle, that's one of our stakes. That one was one of the ones that didn't survive, but some of the other ones have actually put down roots, and they were leafing out. So you get additional vegetation as a bonus. Um, again, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. So in addition to the sedge mats, we also had um, carex plugs of different species. Um, and you can kind of see in the forefront where it's mostly plugs, and then in the back, um, kind of where the um, big rock is on the top of the picture, that was more of sedge mats. It comes in thicker, but again, don't, don't put your eggs in one basket. Um, okay, so this is kind of our most recent one. This is Wish Push Campground, again, off of um, Clay Elm Lake. And the photo on the top right, this road accesses one of our restoration sites. It's called Picnic Island. Um, most of the time it's inaccessible to the public because the road floods, depending on the, le uh, the level of the reservoir. So if you're doing planting, you have to make sure that your timing is just right. We were trying to do some spring planting, and when I went out with the contractor to see, it's like, well, okay, we'll have to come back to that one a little bit later. Um, but a couple months later, or, uh, probably about two weeks later, um, that was totally accessible. So Davis Culvert is a culvert that goes under the main road that accesses the boat launch at Wish Push Campground. So you can see on one side, the reservoir level is pretty full on that side, but just on the other side of that culvert, that box culvert, the east side of Davis Creek, um, there was hardly any water coming through. And when you look upstream, hardly any water, but we have plants that are installed on either side of those banks and even kind of close to the toe of the creek. We had a lot of emergent species. Again, if there's no water, it's really hard to make things live. And that was even with trying to do some supplemental watering from the year before. Um, fifth piece, piece of advice from a lake is shore up your friendships. And that has to do with not only knowing what habitats you're going to be planting into, but what the habitat modifications are going to look like. So in some areas we have rock piles that are going. In a lot of areas, it's a forested. And in a lot of other places, you have these shorelines with woody debris that's been put down. We tried to plant the plants so that the woody debris would kind of be as a little bit of a protection. And again, kind of hit or miss because it's a very dry spot. Partnerships. This is what makes the world go round. This is how you're going to accomplish your projects. Um, we have multiple people, multiple agencies involved with these projects. Um, and everybody has input, which makes your projects more successful. You get better outcome at the end because you know what everybody's interest is. Again, shoring up your friendships. So this is just another picture of everybody who's involved with these projects. And it's a lot of people. And sometimes it's hard to navigate those waters. Sometimes it takes things more time because you're trying to let everybody have input. Last thing is, take time to reflect. 
when you get focused in on your projects, you get focused in on your projects. Sometimes it's good to just step back, take a look, and realize you're in really beautiful country for the most part. Um, you want to realize that there are limitations to what you can do. For the most part, what you see around growing uh, around the reservoirs are willows and cottonwoods. But when you're looking at developing a planting palette, it gets boring just putting cottonwood and willow and cottonwood and willow, but that's the reality of it. You want to minimize as much loss as you can and at the same time, maximize your potential. So in some of these areas, because we know it's going to be high and dry, the whole method of burying your plants as deep as you can and still have them survive so that they have the best availability to get to water. Um, but flip side of that is you're going to need specialized equipment to do that. And so sometimes access can be an issue. Last thing is the whole reason why we do these things is we want it to be full of life. The upper um, left is a wetland that's up near Snoqualmie Pass, and it is just the most beautiful wetland that I've ever been to. And these are kokanees that are in Ketchless Lake that go up Gold Creek. And that's all I got. Oh. Oh. Copy. Okay. Going once. Mostly it's revegetation because they are trying to protect the shoreline. They're trying to prevent more erosion because of that higher level, um, that and, and trying to create fish habitat, so little refuges for fish, that's, that's kind of the two primaries. So before they even go out the door, it's reviewed and there are um, heritage surveys um, archaeological surveys that are done before ground is even broken. So, so far, no. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you very much.